Hello, people of the internet. It is Wednesday here on Transfused. Mr. Wednesday speaking. And this week, we're talking about role models. Now, since my time coming out, I have done a lot of research in regards to past trans people. My reasoning is because, you know, I just, I had a lot of view on it where I tended to think, you know, if I can see somebody who's managed to go through this and it's not turned out badly for them, then, you know, that's, that's great. So, I have three role models. Um, first of which, Dr. Alan Hart. He was an American physician way back in the early 1900s, um, who I believe was one of the first people to actually undergo uh, complete hysterectomy as well as... <sighs> I can't remember the name for the other surgery, but it basically made him sterile. Um... He had gone through that surgery in 1917, so this tells you, like, how far back this was. But afterwards, he decided that he wanted to dedicate a lot of his time and resources into researching tuberculosis and trying to find uh, treatments for such diseases. Now, he had lived to be fairly old, I guess, for, for those times. And after, after his passing, his wife had made sure to act on his wish that um, there be a fund established to help with uh, research for leukemia and trying to find a cure for that, which is what his mother had died from uh, a little while before. Now, the interest that is currently running on his estate is donated every year to that fund, which makes the grants uh, to give for research into leukemia and its cure. Now, my second uh, role model is Robert Eads. Some of you who are frequenters of documentaries may already know of him from the award-winning documentary Southern Comfort. Uh, this was made back in 2001 and it documented the life and death of Robert Eads. Unfortunately, uh, because of the stigma that goes along with being trans, he went through, I think it was almost 12, 12 doctors, more, more than that actually, and none of them would touch him in fear that, you know, they would, they would ruin their practices because he ended up developing ovarian cancer at some point. Now, it wasn't until a year after he'd been diagnosed that a doctor had finally decided, you know what, I'm going to help you out. And by that point, the cancer had already spread through several other organs and... He passed away in January 17th of 1999. Put this, putting this into perspective, uh, he was only born in 1945. So he was not very old when this happened. And lastly, on a bit more of a positive note, um, Buck Angel. Now, a lot of people will sit there and say, Oh, well, you know, it's a really dumb idea that you'd look up to a porn star as a role model. I don't particularly think so, but my reasoning for that is because Buck is not only uh, a porn actor slash producer. Uh, he's a motivational speaker. He has no problem going out and educating people on the matters of being trans. He's been openly transsexual for quite some time and in 2007 he actually won uh, an award for transsexual performer of the year which was um, an adult video award but still um, you know he's 
He's also served on the board of directors for the Woodhull Sexual Freedom Alliance since 2010. And what that foundation does is it works to affirm sexual freedom as a fundamental human right through advocacy and education. This guy has done so much work in trying to bring more freedom and equal rights to trans men and you know I just recently because I was I was already a fan of a lot of his work I decided to check out his uh, his documentary and I I was I was pretty pleased with it it uh, it opened my eyes to a lot and another thing he's also very much into the fitness lifestyle and being healthy so that's another thing that I kinda I, I, I look up to I respect that and yeah no other than that in regards to uh, to actors might get shot for this one but I really don't mind Chaz Bono I know that a couple of people uh, are not overly fond of him for several reasons but you know, I, I I can understand where he's coming from on the front of, you know, having a rough time and suffering from depression and all of those kinds of things. And no, it never is an excuse, but, you know, <sighs> cut a guy some slack. Um, yeah, so that's... That's it for today. Um, these are my ramblings, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Peace out from Canada.